working with Solomon in that area. And uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And uh, I'm going to read that verse of Scripture. Then we're going to go back over to the book of Proverbs in chapter 22. Okay, but we'll start in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. I hope you'll highlight or underline or circle this verse if you do mark in your Bible. It says here, good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Isn't that amazing? Now, there's more in there than meets the eye. And I'll be share that with you in just a few moments, okay? Well, let's read it again. A good name. Didn't say a great name, did it? He said a good name. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Amen. Then back over in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, we find this verse, verse 1. Once again, it starts out about a good name. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Let's read it again. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Tonight I want to share with you this thought. I'll bring you a simple message on a good name. Do you have a good name? I, you know, uh, when I think about people's names, there's something about your name, amen? I mean, when people uh, call your name, of course, you may have the same name as somebody else as far as, you know, Mary or James or Jim or Susie or something like that. And, uh, but there's something about your name, You're somebody calling your name. Uh, but uh, your name is a name that God says is very valuable. should be anyway, a good name. I wrote this down. What does your name mean to people? What does your name mean to people? Now, uh, I asked my mother one time, I said, Mom, uh, my name is James Howard Baker. I said, uh, where, where, did, where did that come from? And she said, well, your doctor's name was James. And your daddy's name is Howard. So I was named after the doctor and my daddy. Okay, and of course, the baker part. Okay. We used to picket people when uh, 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 Brother Howard Lyons was alive and Brother James Stanfield. I'd say, well, there's James, there's Howard, and I'm the baker, James Howard Baker. Uh, one time I picked up the paper, the newspaper, and I just, and by chance, this was years ago, looked over in the obituary section, and sure enough, a James Howard Baker was mentioned in the obituary. I thought, boy, am I dead or alive? <laughs> and uh, of course, now it was another James Howard Baker. And I'm giving you all this for a reason. I remember Sherry's daddy. Now, his, her daddy has an unusual name. His name is William Wanzel, W-O-N-Z-E-L. William Wanzel Baker. Sherry was a baker before I married her. She's a double baker. He was in the hospital up in Columbia one time for having some surgery. And, uh, and so uh, some weeks and all went by and his, he had made sure his bill was paid. But later on, he got a bill in the mail. And it was an astronomical bill. And he thought, I, this is not, I paid my hospital bill. So he goes there and he's trying to get it all. So no, 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 you used to got to be paid. There's no evidence. Come to find out there was another in the same day, same week, just the a, a same part of the day, there was another man named Wim Wanzel Baker in that hospital. Two of them with that crazy name, Wim Wanzel. Have you ever heard some names that are unusual names? When I pastored over at the Adams Run Baptist Church, there was a man there, uh, oh, uh, his name was Bob Bramlett. You remember Bob? You remember him? You wouldn't, okay. Uh, Bob Bramlett was uh, from up in the Cherokee area of North Carolina. And, uh, but his real name 
was Robert E. Lee Hornbuckle Bramlett, Jr. They called him Bob. <laughs> Bob. I said, he said, yeah, my daddy was a senior. <laughs> Robert E. Lee Hornbuckle Bramlett. Up in, he was, his, mom, his dad was full-blooded Cherokee. Well, Baker, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say people have unusual names. But here's my point. It really doesn't matter what your name is. Is it a good name? Now, sometimes people come from a family that has a bad name. I won't mention this, but when I grew up, there were certain people in the town who had bad names. I mean, their reputation was known to be bad. Some of you would maybe went to school with people whose reputation gave them a bad name. Could have been a girl or a boy, a classmate, uh, and so a name. I remember in school we had teachers that had names that you didn't want to take their class because they were very strict. They were known as mean teachers. They weren't mean. They were just good teachers who wanted to give a good education. And I remember one time I had a teacher and uh, her name was Miss Robertson. She taught uh, eighth grade uh, math. Boy, was she mean. She wouldn't give us a break, but I learned, <laughs> I learned math under her. Very strict lady. And uh, on and on I could go about this. Now think about this. What do people think of your name? Think about it. It all depends on your age. You know that? You can take a, 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 a little boy, a little girl, Bring them in the church, and they can be raised by the best parents in the world. And you say, that's just a precious little girl. She can be so sweet and so kind and so nice, and the little boy can be a real gentleman. But in 10 years, that little girl could be as wicked as a devil. And that little boy could be, could be in, 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 in jail or in prison for crimes and things of that sort. You understand that we sometimes read people's name in the paper and what they have done. I mean, some horrible crime. They've killed somebody. They've molested somebody. And, and, uh, uh, and then they, you check the background of that child. And, and many of them came from homes where they went to Sunday school and, and mom and daddy did this. And, and, yet, and yet somehow something happened to them. And so it all depends what age you are. You got to understand, consider names of some, of some uh, famous people. And I use the word famous. Just because somebody has a famous name does not make them great. Okay? For example, Babe Ruth. Well, if you know anything about baseball, you understand that Babe Ruth is considered probably uh, uh, the top three baseball players of all time. But when you read his life story, he was a womanizer, heavy drinker. Betsy Ross, we think about the U.S. flag. Adolf Hitler. Would you name your son Adolf? No. Billy Sunday. You say, who is that? Well, the greatest evangelist to ever be in America. Elvis Presley. They call him the king. No, he wasn't the king. Moses. How about that? King David. When you think of those, when you think of David, usually what do you think of? As a kid, you think of what? He killed Goliath. But as he got older, he committed adultery. Had a man murdered. Abraham Lincoln, great president. We can go on with that. Some people have a good name because of some charitable act that they do. Amen. I mean, they have, in other words, they help sponsor something to a good charitable act. And they, they, are by, they push that and they do that. And because they do that, they, they, that's a good name. Listen very carefully. Even charitable acts are wonderful and great, but that does not make them a Christian. Listen now, a good name does not make you a Christian. Okay? It does not make you a Christian. 
And uh, some people, they have a good name because they excel in some sport or some other area of life. They excel in something. Uh, it, may be, uh, it may be a sport. It may be in engineering. It may be in science. It may be in any number. It may be in the business world. He's a multi-millionaire because of this. He has a good name. So anyway, uh, what about this? And uh, what are some things uh, that make a, will make your name great? What are these verses really teaching us about a name? They teach us something. God didn't put something in the Bible, especially he said a good name twice. He's saying this, that a good name is, is a great treasure to have. Matter of fact, he's saying here that a good name is the greatest treasure you could ever have. Think about that, a good name. Let me share with you tonight about five things about this matter of a good name, a good name. When I was growing up, I didn't know this as a little boy, uh, my daddy did not have a good name. My daddy was a, was a drunkard. Uh, now, my daddy, when he was not drinking, was a, was a hard worker. Matter of fact, my daddy was such a hard worker, but he only drank on the weekends. And he was such a good worker that they never would fire him. They'd keep him because he was such a good worker. I remember when I uh, uh, took a job in Lancaster, South Carolina, uh, at uh, a place called Clark's Control manufacturing company, and my brother had been working there for about four or five years. As a matter of fact, he's the one who told me to put an application in. Now, listen to what I'm fixing to tell you about my brother now. His name's Marin. He's 10 years older than me. So I go to the plant, and you go through the process, Brother Tommy, of getting the job. And so I go in, the supervisor, they talk to you about this, and they say, oh, you're the, you're the brother of Marion Baker? I say, yes, my oldest brother. And the, the supervisor said, if you are half as good of, as your brother, we'll keep you. Didn't say as good, just half as good. I thought, boy, I hope I'm half as good as my brother. And then I, they hire me. And then so I, I'm, I'm there and, and going through a training process and my brother comes over. And he puts his arm around me and he says, little brother, you better not mess up. I said, I won't. He said, because if you mess up, not only will it affect you, it'll affect me. You know what he was saying? Don't mess my name up. Huh? My grandfather co-signed for me one time to buy a little old $25 gas heater. My grandfather. Matter of fact, he didn't co-sign. Uh, the, the guy who sold it to us, he said, now, who's your daddy? I didn't want to tell him who my daddy was. My daddy had already passed away. I said, my grandfather, Samuel Presley Vonador, S.P. Vonador. He said, oh, you're, 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 you're uh, Mr. Presley's grandson. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I'll let you have it. Called the phone. He called my grandfather. Uh, Mr. Vonador, your grandson's in here wanting to, uh, Get a, a little heater on credit. Will you back him? Granddad said, yeah. He said, blah, blah, blah. he said, your granddaddy wants to talk to you. My granddaddy was just like my brother. He said, son, you will pay that bill on time every time. Yes, sir, granddaddy, I'll pay that bill. You know why? My granddaddy had a good name. First of all, we listen, if you're going to have a good name, these verses teach this. You, we must value character over money and great fame. If you're going to have a good name, you must value character over money or great fame or the favor of people. See, a lot of times people understand that, that, that they, they do things for for money or for prestige, to have a good name. I'm going to do this. That'll make me somebody. I'm, a, I'm going to do this because that'll put money in my pocket. No, no. If you're going to have a good name, you must value character over everything else. Because when you have character, good godly character, that means you'll keep your word. 
You'll work hard. You'll pay your bills. You'll try your best. Even when you mess up, even when you don't keep your word, you own up to it and say, I'm sorry. I was not able to keep my word. Having good character means telling somebody when you've messed up, you telling them, I'm sorry. I've been here now 42 years, and in that 42 years' time, I've had to go to at least a half a dozen members personally and say to them, I'm sorry, because I didn't realize I had used them as an example and did not get their permission. There wasn't nothing real bad. And I, and I had to go apologize to them and say, I'm sorry. You see, a lot of times when, when people mess up, when you mess up, and you're not able to keep your word, and you, it's sort of like, you know, uh, when somebody owes you something, when you've, done, when you've loaned somebody something and they lose it and don't pay it back, you become the bad guy to them. Huh? That's not true. They're the bad guy. I remember years and years ago, <clears throat> uh, we had, we had a, a, a fellow who was a member here who was in a habit of not paying his bills. So one time I got a phone call. It was, a, it was someone saying, uh, you have a, a church member named so-and-so has put you down as a reference. What do you think? I said, don't hire them. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? What, what do you mean don't hire them? I said, they will not work and they won't pay their bills. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying, Brother Baker? I'm not going to give somebody a good reference if they don't have a good name. Are you listening to me? A, a person who has a good name, man or woman, young or old, will, will value character over anything as far as money or, or, or the favor of people. You'll be surprised how many people will say and do things to butter up to somebody just to get on their, get on their good side. That's not good character. Do you realize there are preachers right now who will use, their, use his people to better himself? Oh, yeah. I remember some years ago, there was actually a preacher, a, a friend of mine. I went to a revival meeting they were having. And in that revival meeting, uh, <laughs> in, in the course of revival meeting, the evangelist gets up, the evangelist gets up and says, you know what? Uh, uh, I believe it. I believe it'd be the will of God for y'all to give your preacher a uh, uh, a a a a, a, and he called call a number up raise. <laughs> I believe it'd be the will of God. I was there, uh, and so and so well, somebody in the church said, "Well, I'll amen that." And how y'all feel about it? So I thought, my goodness. Now, am I opposed to the preacher getting a raise? Not one bit. Here's what I'm opposed to. After the service, the pastor told me, he said, you get that guy, you see what he'll do for you? It's horrible. Horrible. That's not good character. That's horrible character. If you're going to have a good name, you must value character over anything else. Number two, we must be honest in all our dealings. We must be honest in all our dealings. Amen? No matter what it involves, being honest in it. I mean, if it's, if it's money, if it's a job position, being honest in all our dealings. I remember uh, Brother John Jerkins, he got uh, called a preacher, and uh, he was in, in Bible college, and John had gotten a speeding ticket in Cottageville. Of all places, he got a speeding ticket. At one time, Cottageville was the number one speed trap in South Carolina. Well, he got a speeding ticket in Cottageville, and so he went over there, and, and at that time, money was scarce. He was having, I mean, he was having to watch his dimes and nickels, and Meriden had, had, had uh, a couple of kids, and so he's going over there to, to, to uh, pay that ticket, and when he gets out of his vehicle, he's going, he looks down, there's a, a brown paper bag there, and he picks it up. He just thinks it's trash, and he gets, it's something, it opens up, and it's full of money. As a matter of fact, it's much more than what his ticket was. Now, he's thinking this is a gift from heaven. 
God has sent me a gift. And his wife, Susan, says, Now, John, that music, that, not music, that money belongs to somebody. He said, Yeah, me. God gave it to me. No, no, somebody's lost that. You cannot keep that. He said, I don't, and so, so anyway, finally, he gets spiritual. He goes in, and so his time comes. He goes before the magistrate in Collegeville. He said, Your, he said, uh, 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 he said, before we get started, he said, Your Honor, before we get started, I found this outside, and it must be belonged to somebody who's in here or been in here, and I just want to turn it in. And so the judge counted it out, and he said, well, I'll tell you, it's all cash. He said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it right here. Maybe they'll come, and come back and claim it. And he said, all right. He said, uh, he, he, and so here he is. And he said, uh, he said uh, uh, how do you plead? He said, I was speeding. He said, uh, all right. He said, uh, uh, he said I'm going to write this off. You don't owe nothing. He said, uh, Mr. Jerkins, he said, uh, you're an honest man. Thank God for his wife. Are you listening? Now listen to me. How many of us would have said the same thing he said? I probably would have. Amen. Bobby raises his hand. <laughs> you see, you must be honest in all your dealings. No matter what it involves. Honest, honest, honest. Uh, and so number three, listen. We must not, listen, we must not seek to just have the favor of man more than God's favor. If you're going to have a, a, a good name, it's not trying to please man, but to please him. Okay? That is the whole thing. In other words, not the, in other words, you can do things to be a good to people, but if you're doing it, if you're doing it to get their favor and to please them instead of God, that's the wrong thing. You see, a, a, a good name lives on, lives on this matter of, of, of purpose. Why did you do that? The motive behind it. You see, God looks at us and says, what was the motive behind this? Why did you do that? And that's how you get a good name. Is your motive behind things? Motive, motive, motive. Oh, my, I cannot tell you how many times the, the Spirit of God has spoken to me and said, why did you do that? Did you do that for your, for your good or for my glory? Did you, do, did you do that so that you could get on their good side? And a good name is honest in all their dealings. It, it looks at character above everything. And it, seek, it seeks to have the favor of God over the favor of man. Over the favor of man. Woo wee. You remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts? How, how they saw how everybody else was giving. And they said, We got some land over here, and we're going to sell this land. And what we get for it, we're going to lay it right there at the apostles' feet. And, and, what, we, and what we get is going to help out the poor and needy. Well, when they said that, when they done that, they got way much more than what they anticipated. And the Bible says they, they agreed together to keep back a portion. They didn't realize that God saw it. Now watch this. When they come and they bring it and, and they come before the apostle Peter and they give it, the Holy Ghost told Peter what had happened. Isn't that amazing? And you, you know what happened? As a result, both of them died that day. God killed them both for lying to the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you a question. Would you be alive if that were true today? I wouldn't. There's been times my motive has been more fleshly than spiritual. Huh? What are those, preacher? That's between me and the Lord. Amen. Seek to, to have the favor of God over man. Well, we're going to give this and we'll, we'll be somebody. But when that, when that money came in, they said, oh, that's a lot of money. Number four. We find this in, here in, in Ecclesiastes 7, 1. How we die, listen, how we die, let me read it to you, Ecclesiastes 7, 1. 
A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now, why is that in there? Now, here's why. How we die is more important than our birth. You're, the, the way you die is much more important than the way you were born and who, where you were born. By the way, Tara gave birth to that little girl today. They hadn't named it yet. It's the it baby. And so that's what he's saying. A, a person could be born in, in poverty. A person could be born in royalty. But it's not how you are born that's so important. It's how you die. And what as you go through life, I was told this, Brother Ryan said that the, 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 the Jones young man that was killed, that there was over 500 people or more at, at, uh, at that service. And today, Anthony told me there were over 400 and something people that signed the register for Brother Stanfield. I didn't know the Jones fellow, but I knew Brother Stanfield. It's, it's how you die is very important. Not what you die with or without, but how you die. How you die. I mean, is it going to matter? Is it going to matter? We hear about people who say, well, he, he threw the most touchdown passes. He hit the most home runs, and, and he did this or she did that, and, and on and on we go, uh, go. But you know what? The accomplishments of life are fine, and being rewarded for success is wonderful, but a, a, a good name is far above any of that, any of that, any of that. And then last of all, you determine the, the value of your name. You determine that. Not your mom, not your dad, not your brother, not your sister, not your wife, not even your husband. You determine the value of your name. How valuable is it? Hmm? You know, you can't put that in monetary value, but just how valuable is it? Does your name anything, mean anything to anybody? I do know this. I do know this. That a person can have a good name through year after year after year after year, and then somewhere down the road, maybe 30, 40 years, uh, and, and they're six years or seven, I mean, really do something crazy to mess up years of a good name. It's very important that you go through life establishing good character, establishing a good name, and making sure it carries all the way out to the very day that you die. Very important. And you determine that. Nobody else does. You determine that by, by, by how you live and what you do, how you treat people, how you behave around people your demeanor around people. Listen, uh, uh, now not everybody's going to be the same. You're not going to have the same personality as somebody else, but you don't have to be a snob. You don't have to be a know-it-all. You don't have to have a lot of money to have a good name. I know a lot of people who don't have a lot of, a lot of money, but they got a great name, a great name. Oh, yeah. And so here's, here's, my, here's my closing question. What do people think when they hear your name? When they hear your name, once again, it all depends on what they've heard about you sometimes. It's so important for you not to spread gossip. When you, when you tell something about somebody else, even though it may be true, or it, you know it to be the truth and you tell something about somebody and it's bad, you spread bad truth about people, you're hurting their name. You don't know if they've gotten right with God or not. But your name, your name, awfully important. I'll tell you how important it is to have a good name. And even though this, is, this has to do with the ministry, let me read it to you. 1 Timothy chapter 3. You don't have to turn to this. Listen. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, that's, that's a pastor, he desireth a good work. Notice that word good. A bishop then must be blameless. Didn't say sinless. It just said blameless. What does that mean? That means he's got a good name. 
the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, that means serious-minded, of good behavior, does that sound like a good name? Given to hospitality. How does he treat people? Does he, does he, does he have people over to his house? Does he, is, in other words, does he, is he uh, have a, a, good, a good trait with people? Apt to teach, not given to wine, intoxicating wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, that means not in it for the money, but patient, not a brawler, now, there are some preachers who want to fight <clears throat> physically. Not covetous. They don't want everything else. One, listen, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Listen now. Not a novice. That means immature. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Listen to this. Listen. We're talking about a good name. We're talking about a preacher having a good name. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. If a man is going to be a pastor, he's got to have a good name. Amen. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Then he goes on to say, likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, and, and on and on. The point is here is that for a preacher to be a pastor, he's got to have a good name. Now, before we close out the service, all of us know there have been people who have messed up. David messed up, didn't he? There are people who mess up do things they shouldn't do, behave in such a way they shouldn't behave, and they get it right with God. Did David get it right with God? He, David got it right with God and became the greatest king of Israel. Amen? Now we look at Solomon, who started out good, but look how he ended up. Worse off than any, any, any king. All them concubines and wives. So the thing is, even though people start out good and end up end up in a sour way and some folks mess up and get right with God. You see, when people get right with God, you and I, not, we're just to say they're right, they got it right with the Lord. I hope tonight will your name honor the Lord? If there's one thing I want in my life, I mean, it, with other things, but I, this, is what, this is what I want in my life. This is what I desire. I want to have a name that when somebody hears it, They'll say, that's a good man. Not a great man, not a great preacher, that's a good man. You ladies here, you ought to so live that when somebody hears your name, they can say, that's a good lady, that's a good woman. And by that they mean that you love the Lord, you love your husband, you love your children, you live right, you do right, a good name, a good name. Amen. Let's strive every day we live, where we go to work, those we, those we run around with, those our comrades, our co-workers, our peers. Let's live in such a way, not, not to win their favor, but to win his favor. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven.